What's going on guys and welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So today we're going to be scaping a tiny little nano tank. This is actually the f f second tank I ever purchased. Purchased, bought, that sounded weird. Anyway, my wife went away for one weekend and I grabbed the opportunity to buy a second tank. I don't recommend it. She wasn't happy when we got back, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, let's have a look. So the tank I'm talking about, of course, is this one here. It's a little overgrown, I'm not gonna lie. It sits nicely in between all of these though, doesn't it? But the plants are really, really healthy. You can see that there's just loads of really nice sort of leaves there. Of course they are, they're plants. <laughs> so that's Hydrocotyl Japan, that one that looks like a little clover and I'm definitely going to save that. But yeah, really fun size. We could do something really simple with it, just like I did before, which is basically just a staggered bunch of plants <laughs> from the front to the back and just let it do its thing. But first of all, got to get these plants out and get everything cleaned up. Oh, well, that turned out pretty well. Look at how good these plants are. I could have pulled that all out, to be honest, as one section, but I, I thought it'd be too difficult to sort of manage. But yeah, we've got some Rotala Hra out of it. We've got Limnophila, Rotala Rotundifolia, and the Hydrocot Japan as well. So we've got a few good plants there to choose from. I'm gonna, only going to pick the best because some of them are quite scraggly because they haven't been getting any light. So for our substrate system, we are gonna be using soil. This is soil from my garden. So what you wanna do is go and peel back some grass somewhere, scrape off a load of the soil. You don't need much at all. I mean, this is way too much for that tank, for instance. And then just put it in the oven, dry it right out, and then you can remove any sticks and bits of grass and stuff like that by sieving it. So easy to do. And then you've just got this really good natural source of nutrients for your plants. Now this stuff is so nutrient dense, so we do not want it in the water column. So we need to mix it with some gravel and then cap it with some sand cap it with some sand. I don't know why I've done that. So that's our nutrient rich base layer taken care of. If you notice there, right in the foreground, look, I've, I've pushed it backwards. We don't really want to see this gravel, it can be quite ugly. And this allows us to put our sand capping all the way to the foreground. But it's probably a good idea again on top of this now just to put some clean gravel and then our sand. We can plant into the sand then and the roots of the plants will find its way into this nutrient rich base layer. Yeah, sorry, scratch that. I think I was in aquascaping mode or something. Of course we want the gravel to be shown at the front. This is gonna be a fun tank that we can like observe little changes to. So having that layer on show, we'll just show either roots going into it or getting colonized by sort of little critters and things. Well, yeah, we definitely wanna keep that on show. So on top of that now, we cap it with sand. There we go, a little bit over an inch, well not the foreground, about an inch of the foreground and then look, you can see to the side there, sort of, well, slightly tapers up, whatever. But that's plenty, it's a good little depth there to be able to plant into, because as you plant into that, it'll just, it'll grip the bottom of the stems and be nice and easy. Nothing worse than when you haven't got enough depth, you put your plant in, fill it up with water and then the whole lot just comes out. <laughs> oh, painful. 
So what we need now is our hardscape and for that I'm just going to go for some little pebbles. You guys know I love a few little pebbles and I'm going to go for some black ones just like I did when I first set this up. It was a really good look and I just feel like I can do an even better job this time. Now is probably a good time to tell you about my new merch. This is designed by me myself. It was designed by me myself. I think it's really cool but then I like fish. Most fish people are weird so I wanted a massive fish on my hoodie. So this design is actually based on my female turquoise discus so thank you very much to her for being the supermodel. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah click the link above or in the description if you want to grab one. So it doesn't get any more simple than that guys does it? I love doing little scapes like that. It's just so punchy, very simple. This is definitely a tank for everyone. So recently I've been doing quite a lot of big builds and I wanted to just strip it back, you know, go back to the roots and just do something super simple that everyone else can do. Again, I'm going to leave the links for everything in the description so you guys can find this stuff. If it's not the model, it'll be something similar. But now is a really good time for us to start adding our plants in. Simple foreground with some hair grass and then just stagger stems in little bunches all the way to the back. Kind of like a Dutch style scape, but less formal if you like. And this area down here is where I'm going to be getting the plants from. It's a little bit murky because I've very recently just pushed all these in. Um, so we've got some hair grass there that we're going to use. And I've got some established versions of some of the other plants. So that plant right there is Rotala Hra. Well, I've already got some really nice submerged growth on some other plants that I can take trimmings from. This hair grass though is doing really well. So I'm going to take one of those out and use that in the foreground of the new tank. So that's looking really good. I've kept it quite sparse deliberately. It's fun to watch stuff grow in and it actually looks quite natural, doesn't it? Just sort of randomly plug them around. You know, don't think about it too much, but just try not to create a pattern. Some people like to do it like a grid, but I, I, I don't. I just like to put it in like that. It looks a bit more natural to me. Remember, all this will be slow growing, so it's not like we're gonna have a full carpet within like a week. <laughs> Maybe a month or so, but you know, it'll take time. So small plants like this guys need uh, misting very regularly when you're building your tank. They will dry up quickly, which is annoying for me though because I have to keep wiping the glass so you guys can actually see what I'm doing because every time covered. It's okay though, it's worth it. It's worth the effort for you. Right, there we go, we're all good. Now let's start putting our stem plants in. So we've got the stuff that we saved from the previous setup and then also turn you around so this is my asian fish aquarium many of you will know this but some of you won't because this will be the first time you've seen any of my videos this is doing really well but it's got some really nice stems i want to take out only a few because they're so healthy so we've got the pagostamon erectus this cool little narrow one there we've got the limnophila at the back over here this is a really nice plant and because it's trimmed so many times now you're seeing that they're staying quite compact and the the leaves are quite small as well so that will suit our small tank and then also in the middle there we've got some rotala rotunda folia and some rotala green so i'll just take a little bit of each of those i think it'll look really good in the tank keeping it in bunches i might take some alternant for as well <laughs> and you guys know there's going to be some pearl weed in this right of course there's going to be some pearl weed it wouldn't be an md tank without it <laughs> Thank you. 
And then moving around to this way. So this is the Amazon Aquarium. Many of you know this one. It's doing really, really well. And next to it, then we've got the Buddha tank. I haven't planted this yet. That's all coming soon, but oh, it's looking so good, isn't it? And then next to that over here, we've got my racking system. So we've got all our shrimp over this side, a few fish in this side, but this is the tank here that I want to take the pearl weed out of. That's some really, really healthy pearl weed. Very, very green, no algae or anything on it. So I'm gonna take that as well. So we've got a great little selection of stem plants there. What I want to do now is just fill the tank up because I actually find it so much easier to plant stem plants when the water's in there. You can see how the plants are sitting, you can get them to the right height, you can adjust the angles, all that's good stuff, you know. Just fill it up for stems, well, almost fill it up. We want to leave a little bit of a gap at the top so it doesn't overfill when uh, I put my hand in. <laughs> Let's get this filled up now. You need to do it very slowly. I'm going to put some paper towel down first, pour on top of that and just take your time. Even if it takes 10 minutes or so, it's worth it. Trust me, you don't want to disturb that sand. We don't want any of those nutrients getting up into the water column. If you do disturb it and get some in the water column, just do another water change. And because of course I've got all these different tanks around me that you can see, I'm going to be using the water from these. It's nice and mature and I find it's a really good start to a no filter tank. And it also means I can add fish straight away if I add some beneficial bacteria. And I'm also willing to do daily water changes for a good few weeks. That's the only way you can get away with, you know, a fish in cycle. That's what it's called, a fish in cycle. So if you're new to fish keeping, and not done anything like that before then you probably want to stay away from a fishing cycle and just do your research first but if you if you experience with fish and you're good at keeping them alive and you're good at keeping water then you can do a fishing cycle which is what i'm going to do normally do it with a filter but i've got enough experience for them not to be a problem at all i don't know why i'm looking at the discus because that's not relevant to what i'm saying <laughs> So on the odd chance you haven't got a ton of tanks just sat around like me, and I don't know why you wouldn't, I recommend you fill a bucket full of water a couple of days before you want to try this, and that will just give a little time for the chlorine to just gas off the water. It'll also mean it'll be at a good temperature to start this tank with. Now back to the plant, and I'm just going to crack straight on and do it all in one go. Oh yes guys, it's looking really good. Now I'm actually gonna add a second one of these lights. They're so cheap that, you know, it doesn't matter anyway. And that should then give us the perfect amount of light that we're gonna need. Hang on, let me just stick this one on as well. If I can manage this one-handed, which I can, just about. <laughs> Right, there we go. That's probably just the right amount of light. Maybe a little bit too much for a no filter tank, but that's okay because we're about to add in some floating plants. Now, of course, I've got lots of options of those. So right next to the tank is the Neon Tetra tank here. So this is a black water scape. They've left it to just do its own thing because it's quite cool to watch, like that flowing algae there. These are the floating plants which are now going straight right down into the substrate, believe it or not. Massively overcrowded. Whoa, that's way too bright. Yeah, massively overcrowded at the top here. I need to take some of it out because it's getting a bit silly now but there's basically there's frog bit there's red root floaters in there and there is salvinia now i think the best option for us with this tank is going to be a little bit of the red root floaters i think they'll look really good wouldn't it i mean they are my favorite and it seems silly not to use them in the better tank in the other studio we have got an absolute ton of the red root floaters and they are so so cool look at how good they look hello Right, yeah, let's just take some of these. I don't want too many because it'll get overcrowded in no time. <laughs> Looking good, now we've got every chance of success. Now, what about fish? I've actually got some fish that would be perfect for this scape. And here they are in this tank with my shrimp. So in this tank, we've got, what shrimp is it? 
Ah, the black crystals are in this one. But here's the fish that we're talking about, guys. It's the Chili Respora. So I got these a while ago and they've just been in this tank. But I think that other little one is perfect for them because these are pretty much, I think, the smallest fish you can get, possibly. You know, these are like adult size already. Just for a sense of scale, look. Here they are up against my finger. I mean, they're absolutely tiny. So they'll go really well in that tank. I think I've got about nine or 10 in here, so that'll be good. Let's get them transferred. So it turns out I've got six of the chili Vesporas. I think there's a few more in there, but they're hiding away, so I'll just get them at a later date. Now there's gonna be no need to temp track, mate. These tanks all here are set to room temperature, which is the same as the room temperature in the other studio, so everything matches. Remember guys, we're doing a fish in cycle, so we now also need to add our beneficial bacteria to the tank. So every day I'll do a 50% water change and add more of the beneficial bacteria. Remember this is a fish in cycle. If you're gonna do that, you need to make sure you've got small fish and a very small bio load like I've got here, and you need to be around and willing to do lots of water changes. Plus beneficial bacteria all helps. Again, this is kind of only for experienced fish keepers. So if you're new, I wouldn't recommend it and just do loads of research on cycling a tank first. 